PAC does is uh, get activists and technologists together to really talk through how to uh, solve this issue together, uh, in particular around human trafficking issues. But Digital Labs touches uh, other issues besides human trafficking, which I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is the team. The media designer, uh, John Krause, and I uh, co-founded the uh, company, Jesse Sweco and Joshua Primero. He's perpetually skydiving, so he discovered a way to skydive from plane to plane to plane. He never comes from the ground. It's amazing. We should kind of. Um, so this is our mission, to provide empathy-driven, human-centric design to tech solutions uh, for present social issues. Um, what we typically do is we hold workshops, tech workshops, to get people to come out and invite a lot of stakeholders around a particular issue and listen to them to see what's going on. Um, we find it's incredibly value, valuable to engage all the stakeholders and not just make these pre-assumptions about how to solve issues. This is how we usually go off track and have to yeah, come back and redo things. So we touch upon things like human trafficking, access to education for one of individuals and uh, workers' rights, homeless issues. Um, but today I'm just going to talk about the work we do with the homeless. Um, so, this is not fun, being homeless. San Francisco currently has about 7,000 homeless people. Uh, I believe we're starting to migrate to Oakland. We have about 3,000 in Oakland right now. Uh, something a lot of people don't know about me is I was homeless for about three years when I was a teenager. Uh, this was before the digital dark ages, uh, not before, but during the digital dark, dark ages, pre-internet. Uh, access to resources and finding out how to navigate my own homelessness was nigh impossible. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have support from friends, families, and other people who helped me navigate my way out of it. Uh, so I'm 41 years old, I probably wouldn't be here today without the help of those people. Okay. Um, so there's no walk in the park. Basically, resources are really hard to find. Uh, even in this crazy connected world that we're in, where all the resources are online, to try to navigate that, spend hours just trying to figure out how to manage your day to day as a homeless person. Uh, it could be as simple as, where can I get legal help? Where can I look for a job? Where can I find a bathroom? Where can I get some Wi-Fi? Where can I find a power outlet? And little things that we completely take for granted. Um, there have been <clears throat> some efforts in terms of consolidating these online resources into one place. Um, this is an online version. Uh, I'm not going to name the company. It's okay. You know, it's a little noisy. Uh, this is an app built by another company. Um, getting a little better. It's a lot cleaner, right? Um, these are navigate. But one thing we found with things like this is that uh, a lot of the homeless um, you know, have eye problems, maybe a litter. Uh, so we took this idea and started thinking about how do we make it more accessible. And we built SEAM, uh, which is a social resource app informed by the homeless and low income community. Uh, initially, SEAMI was meant to basically just be, from a design aspect, something that was accessible uh, based on iconography, instead of having to read through a bunch of resources. Uh, the homeless could easily just navigate it by looking at it uh, visually. Um, this was our first effort. This was version one. Uh, originally, you would list any particular resources you were looking for. There was a map view. You could comment on it. Um, you could get comprehensive details. Uh, this was built in about two weeks. That's how fast my team works. Um, but while we were doing this, we realized that this wasn't really informed by the homeless community. Uh, it was still organizationally controlled information, which was out of date super fast. All right, so a lot of that information that seeing that we brought in was already two to three years out of date, and the effort it took to update that was not possible for team of four people. So what we did was we thought about, okay, what is the real problem? And I have friends, Scott Nelson. Uh, he's <clears throat> in and out of shelters, and during El Nino, he walked around for two days straight in the rain to look for a pop-up shelter that he had heard about somewhere. Couldn't find this information anywhere. He finally found it after two days. And when he got there, he had no way of sharing this information to anybody else. We found that fundamentally ridiculous. So we took a look at that and pivoted Simi to a break. It's actually a French word, it's Labra. Uh, it's based, uh, named after Saint uh, Benedict Joseph Labra. He's the patron saint of the homeless. We call it the Bray because we're Americans and we're phonetically challenged, so. <laughs> <laughs> so this, we found, is a way better experience in terms of leveraging the actual street knowledge of homes, letting them provide the information, letting them update it real time constantly, so that took that last mile effort away from us, just having to update information. And we were finding, so this is redesigned, um, completely map-based, 
this is a little bit of an older version. There's more icons you can look for right now. You can filter what you want to search for. You can pin whatever you want on this thing real time. Uh, communities can comment on it, keep it up to date. And what we do is uh, every so often we go through the data and look at through the comments and start aggregating all that into the data, full details of it. So we do some scrubbing occasionally. Um, basically, what we're finding right now is that most people are really interested in bathrooms, Wi Fi, power outlets. You will never find online anybody who just has a list of power outlets that are in your city. You just hack them upon them by accident, and people are just listing these things on there for people to use. And you can also say, hey, maybe somebody painted over it or covered it over, it's not available anymore, you just take it right off, just take it right off. Uh, wi Fi is another good one. Um, open Wi Fi ports or uh, hubs. Um, something we're also finding with this is that the public has been asking us how they can get involved using this thing. And uh, we're going to open source this and lightly, basically, let people freeze it do whatever. Um, I'm just going to breeze through this in about 10 seconds. Uh, these are some of our partners. Um, we are looking for about 100,000 funding for the next year or so. Uh, you can donate phones. We give out these phones to the homeless with the app on it. Uh, download the app. It's on Android. We're going to make it for iOS soon. And it's open source. Go to that link. Help us create a better version of this. Yeah, that's us. Questions? Hey, so you mentioned that um, some of the challenges you were trying to overcome was making an app that homeless people could understand and understand the UI. How do you validate that um, user experience works well for the community you're trying to serve? Yeah, uh, the way we introduce the app and all, all of our uh, work, we uh, run a lot of tech workshops to invite homeless time so that we can start closing up user provide, uh, make it um, up to date on mobile technologies and other technologies. And, while we're doing that, we're able to conduct a lot of research and figure out what you know the, they gravitate to it in terms of design. Um, so you know, a lot of other apps are more snazzier and stuff like that. But we find like with homeless community, they're still way behind. And, like this is phenomenal, for it, and we're trying to improve it as we go. I was just wondering, what's the what's the like the ultimate end vision? Because a lot of these resources seem great for the short term. Power outlets, things like that. But how do you track track like what the ultimate vision is? And um, do you have specific metrics like okay, um, ten thousand people got access to power, but ultimately we're looking for this, like get them off the streets, or what is it? Uh, the the only vision we're focused on is giving the folks back to them, self agency. Right now, uh, you know, even with the organizations that should press support them in a weird unintentional way, they're taking their voice away. There's so much knowledge they hold that is just completely lost constantly. We need to leverage that. So that, that's where we're starting at. Um, the longer term uh, goal is to connect them to resources faster, to get them all streets faster, and to learn from the data that we're collecting, you know, how uh, if there's a rapid cycle that we can find there. Um, something we're also finding is that the public in general has wanted to uh, connect to the app. Um, so what we're talking about right now is Time pins that you can throw down there and say, "Hey, I'm giving away something between this time come and get." Uh, so that's what we're playing around with right now. Um, as you were talking, I think this kind of inspired a segue of my original question, um, which is more of like a, the public's interest in getting involved. Um, is there any vision of Peer to peer, uh, peer to peer donations or, or giving instead of going through an organization where you connect with someone individually that they say, "Hey, I need X, Y, Z," and somebody can can do that. It's similar to the uh, app that I think Caravan put out recently about sponsoring a hotel room for somebody who needs it. Is there something similar to that? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Um, there's actually an organization called Hand Up that does one-on-one -on -one donations, and what we're thinking about doing is partnering with them, thinking of ourselves as more of a super app that can uh, funnel over to Handup instead of us having to reinvent you know, what Handup's doing. So, yeah. Okay, last, last question. Oh. oh, sorry. There was a lady. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. I was wondering just about, um, you mentioned 7,000 people in, home, in, in San Francisco are homeless yeah. um, and you're donating phones to these people. Do you have any 
metrics and how many people are connected to the internet, how many of them have phones, and how many of phones have data plans. So how many of them can actually use the app? Yeah, um, through the Obama phone program, there's been a lot of Android phones handed out to the homeless community. Uh, a lot of them have limited data plans on them. Um, a lot of them still rely on just open Wi-Fi networks to be able to use. Um, these phones that we give out, these were donated to us by Nextbit, a little startup in San Francisco. And what we do is we've uh, partnered with Freedom Pop, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but the Freedom Pop gives out SIM cards with uh, a certain amount of text and data and talk on it and give it out for free. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, that was the last question. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you very much.